During my visit to Atlanta, I met with some educators focused on getting students engaged in STEAM-related studies. Mentors like Dr. Angelique Blackman and Dr. Carmen Sidbury, who provide continued support and direction to those students pursuing higher levels of education, some of whom join me today. Angelique Tucker Blackman, PhD, has been promoting access to STEM disciplines for all students since 1992. She founded Innovative Learning Concepts, which provides mentors to women of color who are pursuing advanced degrees in STEM. Dr. Sidbury is the Associate Provost for Research at Spelman College. She is the first African-American woman to receive a PhD in mechanical engineering from the Georgia Institute of Technology. By sharing these stories, I'm hoping we can shatter some long-standing myths about underrepresented groups' passion and pursuits in STEAM. I really appreciate you guys all coming out and you guys coming out on Sunday. Thank you so much for, for joining us. I'm here to talk about STEM or STEAM because art is a key part of STEM, uh, definitely for me. Uh, and I wanted to talk about what got you guys inspired to jump into the STEM field, who encouraged you, challenges you incurred while, while going, challenges you still, you still encounter. Um, could we start by you guys introducing yourselves and telling me what your what your specialty is? I'm very excited to be here. I'm Angelique Tucker Blackman. I have my degrees, my bachelor's degree and my master's degree in chemistry and analytical chemistry from Georgia Tech. And I have a PhD in science education um, from Emory University. And then I did this um, two year postdoctoral study in cultural anthropology. Hi, I'm Carmen Sidbury and I am a mechanical engineer, formal training. Um, undergrad and master's degree from North Carolina a and in mechanical engineering, and PhD in mechanical engineering from Georgia Tech. Uh, I spent the early part of my career in industry, telecommunications at Bell Labs, and um, I guess my, you know, as a little girl, I wanted to be a teacher, educator, and, uh, but my math passion and the opportunity to study engineering really helped me to kind of get on a journey that open up all kinds of doors. So now in my role, I am inspiring the next generation of scientists and engineers. And so uh, in my work, I look for new programs, opportunities, how I engage faculty and students into really um, kind of embracing science, engineering, and mathematics as a launching pad for anything uh, that they want to do. So can I add yeah. something yeah. that Dr. Sidbury always leaves out. I just really want everybody to know because I met her at Georgia Tech when we were in graduate school together. But she was the first African American woman to get her PhD from tech in mechanical engineering. And she's so modest. Yeah. Did I say it right? You said it right. Okay. <laughs> she's so, and I just think that's phenomenal that we were there together and I didn't even know she. That she yeah. would be and I, I didn't know when I entered the journey that I would be the first and perhaps may not have entered if I would have thought that I was the first, but um, I remember after uh, my proposal, the process of presenting my proposal, and then my advisor says, well, you know, you will be the first. And I shook because <laughs> oh. <laughs> But, also uh, because that's messed up, right? Yeah. Like that's <laughs> that's great, but whoa. Yeah. And I'm Brianna. I'm I did my undergrad at the University of West Georgia and majoring in psychology and minoring in chemistry, but with a pre medical study. And now I'm at the University of North Carolina as well with Hanifa at Greensboro, uh, doing biological studies for PF. Um, my name is Anexi. I'm currently at Georgia Perimeter College, and afterwards I'll be transferring to Xavier University of Louisiana or Georgia State to study biology. Um, I would like to become a pediatric anesthesiologist as of right now. You want to put children to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Just as a parent, it's very difficult. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Um, my name is Hanifa Hendricks. I did my undergrad at the University of Virginia in engineering science. And now I'm at the University of North Carolina in Greensboro doing a pre-health program. So I'm Going to go to medical school sometime soon. And your final goal is to? Um, at least right now, I'm interested in orthopedic surgery. I don't know if that'll change once I get you know, a lot more exposure, but that's just what I've always wanted to do. My name is Katrina Birch. Um, I'm a first year at Georgia Tech. I'm studying industrial engineering. I was biomedical engineering. I'm kind of <laughs> choosing between the two. Um, hopefully, I get to go to grad school and pursue a PhD in something engineering. But I really just want to help 
in some type of way in the medical field, maybe with insurance policies, because my family has a lot of trouble with that. So yeah. hopefully. Um, so uh, these women here are some of your inspired charges. And I'm curious about if there was a tipping point for you in moving into the STEM field, a story you've got about realizing what was possible that you'd like to share. So if you would have asked me when I was like eight, I would have said I wanted to be a lawyer which I don't know why. <laughs> but, um, My mother said that all children are natural lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> but um, growing up, my younger brother, he's special needs. And so as I got older and got to see how developmentally he had delays and then seeing his progression throughout that, living longer than what they said he would, and then things like that, that always got me interested into medicine in general. And then come, I think it was my sophomore year, I had the opportunity to do research at Georgia Tech in high school before I actually got to the school. And I studied um, looking at HIV and the medicines and how that led to heart disease. And that would kill the patients early. So then just looking at all of these different aspects of science. And then January, before I actually got accepted to Georgia Tech, I met Ms. Blackman at a White House conference. And she told me that she graduated from Tech and I had spent time at Tech. So I was excited about that. So just seeing everything around me and how that unfolded and how it all related to science and engineering just kind of pushed me in that direction. Yeah. It's, I guess the thing that really got my attention was, um, I'm an artist as well, I paint. Mm -hmm. So science is kind of the art of, uh, let me see, numbers mm -hmm. for me, if that makes sense. I don't like math at all, but for some reason science really like clicks with me. Okay, um, ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to be a pediatrician and I believe it's because my pediatrician, she was just so great, and I loved her so much. So when I was younger, I was like, oh, that's what I want to do, Mom. I want to be a pediatrician. And as I got older, of course, I was, um, of course, I found out about new fields that I can go into. It's still in the medical field. And the human body altogether just fascinates me, like the way it reacts and doesn't react to certain things. It's really cool to me. So, yeah. I always knew I wanted to be a doctor. Like, you could have asked me as soon as I could speak and I knew what a doctor was. Like, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Um, but I just, like, I just said doctor. I didn't have, like, a real idea of exactly what I wanted to do, what type of doctor. Like, that stuff didn't cross my mind until later. Um, but I had really excellent educators in middle school and high school who pushed me and they were there for me. And they encouraged me to become extremely strong in science and math. That's why my undergraduate is in engineering, um, but I, I still knew I wanted to be a doctor. And in wow. high school, I got to shadow an orthopedic surgeon. It was excellent. I, that's probably my greatest experience today. And he also let me, you know, spend time with other doctors. Like I saw an open heart surgery and <gasps> things like that. And I was just like, this is cool. This is what I want to do. I just keep thinking about the time that I spent in the operating rooms and speaking to patients and yeah. seeing him work. And it's like, well, I'm just going to turn that him into a she, and I'm going to get to do what I've always wanted to do, and that she is me. One of the things that I have, that's changed me the most in doing this show is understanding where my biases are, um, my unconscious biases. And it's one of the primary things that Jamie and I would argue about on Mythbusters. We'd have different biases, we'd have different opinions, we'd have different intuitions and overlapping them to try to figure out what question or what direction we'd, we'd explore. And science is great for that and helping you understand your own unconscious biases. But as you were talking about, you guys have this extra layer of challenge of cultural biases. And can you talk about, you, know, you talked about encountering that teacher saying, are you sure you want to go into this field? And so I've been reading the double bind and other stuff like that. That's, it's, it's really prevalent. And that to me is just a terrible shame because hey, people have been asking me for years, how do we get girls interested in science? I say, ask girls, don't ask me. <laughs> They're all natural scientists. All children are natural scientists. Um, can you talk about some of the, the challenges you've encountered? So I grew up in like a low socioeconomic status and I usually went to the schools that didn't have the best teachers, best education. So that was kind of my challenge and is my big, biggest challenge now going to Georgia Tech because a lot of kids I go to school with went to private schools. They went to really good, just local area schools, and they get it. And so for me, it's like I have to really nitpick at the work. I have to read my book a lot more, study a lot harder. And then also, me and Ms. Blackman were talking about it um, on the way here, is culture shocks of just coming from being in an all-African-American environment. Right. 
and then jumping into something way more diverse and just learning how to deal with that. What I noticed was a difference was that people who have that um, home support or community support, they do much, they can weather the storm. But if you don't have that and you were already kind of um, experiencing negative comments towards you about your abilities, and then you go into an environment that those microaggressions are still coming at you, those students don't survive. And so I've made it like my life's work to anybody who encounters me. You can do it. You can encourage. You can, I told Brianna, you know, well, no matter what, don't quit. Yeah. No matter what, don't stop. Call somebody, do whatever you need to do, because if you don't have that support and then you're experiencing these ag aggressions or biases from others, you don't, you think then it's something internal about you and something deficit about you, and it's not. So I know as being a parent, the thing that's most surprised me about having teenagers is I didn't realize how much my parents could see of me. <laughs> and I didn't realize how much they can see me screwing up, and some of it they just have to watch me do. And I watch, see that with my own kids. And I, you must be watching these girls grow up, watching them become become themselves and see, oh, I can't quite tell her that yet, but she'll come to that, and that's the point at which I'll be able to give her that advice. Yes, and you have to be available. We can't be so distracted that we are not available for anybody mm -hmm. because... You're right. People aren't ready for certain information. They will. We know that they're going to like that. As I was talking to Katrina in the car, and I'm amazed. It is literally amazing that her experiences are the exact same experiences that I had in 1992. Right. I said, so my goal is to reduce that amount of time for you. Right. So she may experience it one or two years. But we're going to shrink that time so that she can spend the next six years accelerating. Yeah, And I, I think it's interesting, as um, Angelique talked about my, I don't talk about being the first one, because, you know, it, it, was, it was quite a journey to uh, kind of go the path and, you know, clear some of the brush. And I hope that, you know, those brush and weeds don't grow back up before the next one comes through. But it's a, a part of, um, you know, as you grow and mature, and as she mentioned, making the path for the next person behind you. Um, it's not that it won't be difficult, but perhaps, you know, it, it won't be as devastating to some degree. Is there an age you've noticed you can catch kids to really start to direct them towards understanding what they want to do? This age, yes. middle school. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, sometimes, you know, yeah. there's the ideal. There, there, it's interesting as I am um, went through my engineering training and even now, as I brought people onto my team to help develop some of my programs, you know, some people get this very early. It's very exciting to hear, like, folks who want to be in medicine early. I didn't know, you know, I, I grew up in a very small high school, and when I went to college, calculus, I was like, what is calculus? And everybody in my classes had calculus. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, can I be an engineer? I mean, I'm not supposed to be an engineer based on if we look at what people say, who can do this? Right, because right. I didn't start my aspiration to being an engineer when I was in middle school. And in fact, it was my junior year in high school that my physics teacher said, oh, you should go to this summer camp and find out what engineering is all about. And I'm like, you mean the person who drives the train? <laughs> you know, that's my limited yeah. exposure to what engineers are and what they do. So I do think we start, the earlier we can start, the better. Uh, but we, we also need to look for opportunities all along the, the journey to bring more people into, into the space. And as Carmen mentioned, we are brokering, we are opening up pathways so that people can do themselves and pursue these esteemed careers. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's one of the things I learned. I, I realized that the people who were doing really well in STEM may not have looked like me, but one of the things I was able to see was that they just did themselves. They were doing what they liked. All of the cultural things we were like just kind of bombarded with, 
but then when you learn to to navigate within within the culture, but then also remember who you are and that be okay. Mm-hmm. It has to be okay. Yeah. And it was, it's interesting you're asking us this because I was literally just saying that to Katrina on the way here. I said, just do you. Yeah. And I know for me, even as a mechanical engineer, you know, everybody thinks I know how to work on a car or I, <laughs> I love power tools, right. I, you know, but I don't. And in fact, you know, getting through shop class was like one of my toughest things. And now as I think about, though, some of the intimidation of some of those things, encouraging our students to, it's okay to be afraid, but, you know, figure out your way of, of tackling that. And finding something starting at a comfortable level. You know, you don't have to jump right in and know how to use the CNC router. Let, maybe we'll start over here with the 3D printer and do something that you really like. And at you, eventually you get more and more comfortable practicing. But it's okay not to know. And it's even okay to not be comfortable. But it's not okay not to try. Try. Yeah. Well, the, the culturally, we're also fed this line of like, follow your dreams, follow your dreams, which is difficult because the system isn't fair. But being you is some, I think, is a much more direct and actually more origin based message because it all it all stems from that. Pun, pun intended. Um, <laughs> I've always been um, a student of charisma because real charisma comes from just being yourself, comes from not wanting to please other people, but wanting just to be present. You nailed it. <laughs> that needs to be the new campaign for STEM, really. Being yourself. Steam, yes. yes. Yeah, I agree. Your turn. <laughs> My name is Brandon Thomas. Um, I want to be a fashion designer and a football player. <laughs> uh, guys, I really want to thank you all for taking time on Sunday to come out and talk. I I hope that you've gotten something out of this. I felt really inspired by talking to you guys and your, your message and your stories are inspiring and invigorating and humbling and lovely and just like thank you so much for coming out.